Hi, I'm Brad, and this video was honestly a ton of fun to make, and I'm excited you're here to watch it. At the time of recording this video, things are definitely starting to ramp up in terms of this industry. We're kind of entering a new rebirth of the hype cycle that a lot of people like to call it, but there is an exciting growth of potential for XR, and a lot of it comes from the hype of mixed reality, or using VR headsets to do AR, mainly because that's the only way you're gonna have a really good experience doing anything with AR. Now, up to this moment, most of the AR or MR sort of features being shown in headsets or, or kind of being teased by companies, none of them have really excited me too much. Like, yeah, they're neat and nice to have, but they're not something I would say is game changing for me. A lot of the stuff I like to do, in fact, related to AR, is AR in VR by putting stuff in the VR world rather than overlaying virtual stuff into my real life messy space because I do crap all the time and I, yeah. I spent the last one to two weeks kind of messing with mixed reality with a device that you might be surprised to see or not, depending on how long you've been on this channel. This is the Valve Index. Well, it doesn't have a logo on it, but that's because it's a pre-production Valve Index. This was made five years ago in 2018, and the interesting thing about the Valve Index is, technically, it's already a mixed reality device. It's got two full color cameras that most people turn off because Valve has never cared to really give any sort of experiments or fun things to do with them, except kind of see a warped view of your pass-through zone. But I wanted to use the headset to prove that it could do some cool things four years, five years later, and kind of show how powerful the platform of PC could do some of these things that are being hyped about mixed reality. So that's what I did. Now, most of these experiments required mostly just one piece of software, an overlay program called Reality Mixer. And it's a really cool program. It's a little bit no, uh, not very known unless you're in the simming community because a lot of people like to mark out a pass-through view of either their steering wheel or their HOTUS to actually see in their VR uh, simulator where their hands are, what they're holding on to, what buttons are where. There's tons of buttons on those simulators. But the cool thing about this program is you can use it to actually mark out a box and then use a Tundra Tracker or Vive Tracker to basically tell that box to track that box around that tracker. And it works really pretty well, honestly. It's a, it's a great program. Um, it's only like five bucks or whatever. Now, the interesting thing about this program is I'm pretty sure this program is the base kind of concept that Valve is using. Uh, in my last big Decker data mine video, I, I talked about this portals feature where there's even files, uh, 3D models in the actual files for Steam VR of different shapes you can do if they were to push this portals program into the actual main Steam VR branch. Now with Reality Mixer, you can only do boxes, but you can change the sizes of the boxes and you can map them to different things, as I said. So obviously I did the keyboard first because the keyboard, everyone wants to do work in VR, right? Or, or AR, MR. And it's important to see where your hands are on the keyboard, especially if you are not obsessed and, and crazy, like people who memorized every key on their keyboard. So that was a very simple concept. I mean, uh, even MetaQuest Pro does it, even though that's mostly stationary, right? You, you set one box in your play space and it remembers forever, that's where your desk is. But then I started doing more interesting stuff and I wanna start with this one. Remember this controller? Yeah, this is like one of Valve's first hardware projects that they made at a mass scale. And I 3D printed a special little mount to put a Vive Tracker on it. The reason I did this is I already see there's a lot of benefit to playing flat games in VR headsets, especially as the resolutions are getting to a point where it's actually worth it and might be higher resolution than some monitors you might have. You're not seeing it this moment, but you're gonna see it very soon in this next six months, I would say. And I wanted to be sure that if you were to play a big screen, uh, flat screen sort of thing in a VR environment, that for people who are not used to playing with controllers or even keyboard and mouse, it would be interesting that you can have something to look down at your hands with the pass-through cameras to see where your button your, your buttons are, right? 
Obviously, not everyone's going to have that problem. Some people memorize their controllers better than keyboards, but you know, for me, I'm not a controller user, so it was a kind of cool thing to look down. But also, while being in a virtual environment with friends or who or whatever, it looks like I have created my own handheld with just a controller that has no screen. In fact, when I bought this thing, this was like five bucks, and if you don't count all the VR equipment and stuff I put on it, it's like having a $5 handheld with a screen that can expand or get smaller or change, can curve, do whatever I want with it. The things I learned from this demo was uh, really any overlay program pretty much works for capturing game footage, but some work better than others. Um, the one I used mostly for this was uh, OVR Toolkit, but even that is not as fast as the built in Steam VR tools or the Steam VR desktop that you can also attach to controllers. I really want all of these overlay programs, including the built in one, to be able to map them directly to trackers instead of just left or right hand. I would basically have to set each tracker to left or right hand to kind of get bypass this. But when you do that, you would actually start running into input problems with some games like VRChat, for example. Did you know when you have this thing connected to your PC, it acts as a Vive tracker, basically? Yeah, you could literally like look around, walk around and, and, and click things with this and it's kind of weird because when it's also being tracked to the left hand it's like a weird it's like a weird this you're, you're doing this this is your hand do you, do you like your hand this is your hand now another problem i ran into other than like the speed of the overlay programs and the annoyance of having to set a sort of controller as a left or right hand was also the fact that games that ran de nuvo more particularly suffered extreme performance losses when I tried to run them as a flat screen in my VR environment. I was originally going to do a Persona 5 demo of this handheld feature in like a Persona 5 world in VR chat for full immersion, but I literally couldn't get it to run on my 4090. It was just too much. My, 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 my 4090 could not handle a very low powered game with the Nuvo with a, a, a very undersampled VR chat world. So that sucks. But any game that doesn't have the Nuvo, it worked pretty nice and I really liked it. So then that got me thinking, okay, what if I can alleviate the processing off my PC? Because we're already talking about running VR, we're running, running VR chat, for example, we're doing full by tracking on the VR and I'm running another game on top of that and all the overlays and stuff. That's a lot, that's a lot of processing for one PC. So I wanted to split the processing a bit and see what I can do there. So that led me to this experiment, which was attaching a tracker to a Steam Deck and mapping same concept as the Steam controller, uh, you know, the, the reality mixer with my hands so I can actually see where my hands are on the buttons, where the touch pads are. And it was really fun for this one because whenever you look at a real life screen through pass through like your phone or something, especially with actually uh, binocular pass through color cameras, most of the time it doesn't look good. It looks grainy. It doesn't have the full uh, dynamic range of the display. So with this, I was able to install a streaming program in my my uh, my Steam Deck, which was called Sunlight, stream that feed over to my main PC and then apply that as a screen and overlay it on top of the reality uh, mixed reality view. So it looked like when I was looking at the screen, it looked like I was looking at my handheld, which you might be thinking, what's the point of doing that when you can just play this out of outside of VR? I'm like, well, I want to I want to do it in a pretty environment. Um, I want to be in a virtual train or something. And it worked really well, actually. It worked extremely well. Now, the problems I ran into doing this uh, was mostly the fact that Steam does not like you doing multiple games on the same Steam account over multiple devices. It's, it's not like the old version of Netflix where you can be logged in and watch multiple things. Uh, it's, there seems very particular about that, unfortunately. But uh, I kind of used that as an advantage because what I would do is I basically made a new Steam account. I made a new VR chat account based on that Steam account. And I was able to control a whole avatar with the Steam Deck while I'm in VR. The interesting use case that I did as an example here was I was basically controlling what I like to call a remote control car with my VR chat avatar on my main PC. And there's some interesting applications you probably could do there. Ironically, the most uh, lowest latency thing was me streaming the Steam Deck footage to my PC and the servers, the VRChat servers was actually way slower latency than doing that. But it's pretty cool to be able to look at your Steam Deck, control an RC car for a different avatar. It could be a drone or something as well. There's some interesting applications that could be done there. And while I, I don't think this gimmick is as good as my um, 
attach a tracker to a controller and just change the screen size and whatever. I do think this was pretty cool purely just to alleviate processing for my main PC. Now, finally, I had one more stupid uh, experiment to do that didn't really work out that well, but I wanted to share it anyway. In fact, you might have been able to see it in the corner of this video this whole time. This soda can. Actually, this is kind of like a beer soda hybrid, but yes, I attached a Tundra tracker uh, to a soda can purely so that if I'm in VR chat, I'm playing pool or, or I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with buddies. People, I always see people uh, all the time when I'm hanging out with people in VR chat. They are always trying to find their beer, right? That, that's very common. And I always see people do this with their headset. Whoop, 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 whoop. But with the program I was talking about earlier, all I would have to do is it was activated by eye gaze. As long as I look toward the direction of the beer, I'd be able to see it pop up how far it is away from me and walk up to that beer, even though a lot of people wouldn't call this beer and they're probably right. I was able to grab it best as I could with with the camera pass through. So yeah, beer tracking. This is the future, but it was a lot of fun and really showed me that the Valve Index really had a lot of potential for the AR stuff. It's just again, Valve didn't help anyone do it. <laughs> and even though they seem to be implementing features for their next headset, the Valve Index still has a bit there that it could do for people who want to mess with it and try it. Uh, Reality Mixer is again a great program, but there's also some cool stuff related to OpenXR pass through where you can actually do full on uh, mixed reality apps like Tilt Brush I showed on the channel before. And there's this browser called Metachromium. We're able to load WebXR apps that are also AR and tap into the pass through cameras to do in browser AR games without downloading anything. So a lot of cool stuff that can be done there. Um, but yeah, it was just a fun little experiment. I thought it would be fun to share with you all and show all my little findings and what I complained about and what I didn't like about doing all this stuff. Mixed reality is coming whether you think it's important or not. I don't think it's extremely important for gaming, honestly, but I do see the productivity use cases. I do see where things such as seeing your keyboard, your controller in your real life view can be very helpful to a lot of people especially since it's, it's an addition to VR, right? You still have all the benefits of VR. MR is going to improve VR headsets and just add a little bit more capabilities to them as time goes on. And that's fine um, as long as they don't market the MR as the main feature and ends up being worse than the VR side of things. Anyway, that is the end of this video. My next videos should all be about my SID display week coverage. Um, it's a big biggest sort of industry event where all the companies from around the world come together. Samsung, uh, BOE, LG, all of them show off their newest and greatest technologies for displays. And they have a lot of VR stuff, AR VR stuff there. And there'll be stuff about lasers going into your eyes for displays and stuff. It'll be a lot of fun. And I, I hope the content I bring for you next week will be just as exciting for you as it is for me to go and see these things. Yep.